Well, everybody, welcome into the Wiregrass High School Football Report brought to you by the radio people. This is your weekly look at all things high school football in the Wiregrass. I am your host, Philip Jordan, the NCAA host and producer for Dutch Woods Football on 96.9, The Legend. Got a fantastic show planned for you guys today. I'll be joined by two coaches once again, like last week. First up, I'll be joined by new Brockton Gamecocks head coach, Zach Holmes, and then Slocum Red Tops, their new head coach, Bryant Garrison. And also at the end of the show, I will go over the new rankings, the preseason rankings, let you know which Wiregrass teams are in the top 10. But before I do all that, let you guys know you can find me and the podcast. You can find me on social media at PJordanSEC. Podcast is available on Apple Podcasts, so please follow, rate, and review. Leave a review. I will read it on a future edition of the show. You can also listen to the show over on 969thelegend.com, and I will put the link down in the description of this podcast for you to check that out. You can also watch the show over on YouTube at the Philip Jordan Sports YouTube channel. So please just subscribe over there and then hit that bell for all notifications to get the new episodes. And also leave a comment there. I'll also read that on a future edition. You can always email me at sports.philipjordan at gmail.com. Now let's kick things off. Let's talk with new Broughton head coach, Zach Holmes. First guest this week on the Wiregrass High School Football Report is head coach Zach Holmes, head coach of the New Brockton Gamecocks in a 3A Region 2. And, uh, Coach, I appreciate you taking time and uh, coming on the show this week. Yes, sir. Thanks for having me. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Glad to have you. Glad to have you on the show. And uh, just uh, I, I got to jump right into it. Uh, I know practice has started. Uh, uh, how's everything going? What, what's the vibe around the team right now? Uh, it, it's good. You know, I thought we ended – this past week, we, we did spring ball, so obviously we didn't get to start the week early. So this past week was our first week of practice. And, um, you know, you do a lot of the stuff like when the shorts and helmets days. I mean, we do those about uh, every day in the summer. So, the, you know, no change there. But when you put the pads on, uh, things start to change. And so first day of contact uh, was also the first day of school for us on Friday. And I'm sure, as you know, most coaches like the first day of school practice sometimes can be a distraction and be different just because of the their routine has changed, you know, from summer. But I thought our guys handled that really, really well um, and then handled the heat well. Um, and so the, the vibe is good. This is the first time that we've had enough uh, guys playing. You know, one thing that's happened with our school growing over the past uh, three years is we went from – practicing kind of everybody together seven through 12 when i first got there in 2019 to this year we we have two two different practices going on we have a junior high practice and then a varsity practice but then we have enough uh varsity guys that will also play some j you know ninth and tenth grade game jb but then we have enough to split um the varsity guys up and, and practice against each other and get a good look and so they've been split up into a cardinal team and a gamecock team competing against each other which will hopefully uh, help our competitive drive. And, and then obviously the, the better look you can get going against each other, the better you can be. So it's, it's positive. I think it, it's trending in the right direction with these guys. Obviously we got some holes to fill and that kind of stuff, but um, I think they are, they're hand, like I said, handling heat well and, and, and learning how to practice. You know, you talk about positions, and I was going to uh, ask you, uh, quarterback, how that's looking uh, going from the spring and obviously to now in fall camp. I know Caden Cup was a uh, was with you guys for a while. He's now off to Troy, one of the better players we've seen in the Wiregrass, I think, in a long sure. time. But uh, how's how's it looking with quarterback? Uh, well, Balin Foster will be our our starting quarterback uh, more than likely, and he's a he's a tenth grader. He's a young guy, but he he's got some some intangibles and things that remind me of Caden. You know, he, he's he's very similar to Caden in the fact that he's a he's a really good athlete. He's a multi sport athlete. He plays all three sports and so um excited to have him, but playing quarterback's a different deal. Uh there's some refined skills and things like that that he's learning. And uh and one thing that I talked to him about that I have talked I talked to Caden a lot about too when, when he was there is that, you know, no matter how good an athlete you are, quarterbacks don't challenge you. And playing quarterback rarely comes naturally um, to a lot of people. I mean, most great quarterbacks have always had to work at it, right? And so um, you're going to have to work at it. It's probably going to cause you more frustration than other things, but continue to work. And the lessons you learn from that will will help you grow in, in all the sports you play and be better. And so Balin's doing that. 
he's had a good summer and and then had a good camp so far. But he, he's a sophomore quarterback that has yet to start a varsity game. And so I think it's important that the guys that are around him uh, do a great job supporting him and picking him up, and they have. And, and it helps that we have four out of five back up front uh, to, to protect him. So uh, Balin ste- has, has stepped in there. And uh, like I said, I think he'll – I think you'll have a very similar career uh, to Caden. He'll be, you know, hopefully bear quarterback for the next three years and um, and a similar a similar style of, of playing, you know, can use his feed and can throw it. Yeah, I, mean, I know you guys played a spring game against Goshen. How, how important was that for him just getting that live game action to you? Know? It was good. I'll, I'll tell you that probably – um, looking back on that, like I've questioned that decision whether or not to play a spring game or not. You know, our, we had – I didn't really have a lot of staff turnover. Uh, we, we lost a couple of guys, but because we started the junior high team, I had some guys that wanted to, to do junior high. And and, and then we, we brought in some more coaches too because of the size of the program. And so, like this spring, our, we had coaches coming from all over the wiregrass to come coach and they couldn't be here this day and they could this day. And so trying to make it work. And, but I really wanted to play that spring game part of it for Balin. And, and we probably, you know, I don't know if we, with all the coaching, all that stuff, we may have people and, and people may say, well, you've been better off not playing a game. And that may have been true, but I think it was great for him to get that experience to, to settle in and see live competition against somebody else. And then not just him, but we've got some guys um, who who played football but were playing in different positions. So they have a game under their belt at that, which I think that will pay dividends for us this fall for a lot of people, not just Baylor. You know, well, looking at the rest of the offense, I know uh, wide receiver Matt Smith caught some uh, call a touchdown from him in that spring game, and just yep. the running back position, just you know, uh, the pieces around your quarterback. How's that? How's that looking for you guys? It's good. You know, we Matt uh, Matt's been been with us for a long time, and, and a solid player on both sides of the ball. Yeah, he caught. You know, it was kind of crazy. Uh, people were talking about how bad the you know the spring game didn't go great and all this kind of stuff, and I'm like, well, I'll tell you this: last year in the spring game, we didn't complete a pass, and and this year, obviously, we did, and and like you said, Matt called a touchdown, and so Matt Matt will, Matt's uh, will be really uh, a productive guy on offense for us. I think Jackson Whitworth, another receiver, will be pretty productive on offense for us, and uh, Jackson Lawson at tight end, um, and then and then at running back, we've got. Three guys that we feel really good about: Karius McNabb, uh, Gabe Harrington, and Brian Crumpler. Uh, that w- that we feel really, really good about. And so, I think there's some skill pieces, you know, surrounding Balin that I-, I tell them all the time. You know, we we don't have a five star player. We don't have, um, you know, these big time college recruits and all that. But we- but we're good enough, and we can out team people because we got multiple guys that can catch the ball and run the ball and and. And not everybody has that. You know, some of them have a really good player, but then there's a big drop-off. And with us, I don't feel like there is. So, uh, from, from that standpoint, we just have to play as a team and, and be together. But, yeah, the guys surrounding Baylor, I think, will help him and provide him with opportunities to um, to make plays and to, to where he won't have to carry us, you know, put us on his back and carry us. Yeah, I mean, uh, what cares me now, but I was, you know, I was researching for our conversation. I mean, he, he made a lot of big plays too in that spring game for you guys. Real highlight, uh, three touchdowns. Yep, yep, he did. And you know what? So, so this kind of tells you where Car- – so Carius has been starting on defense for us for the past two years, has never really played offense, and, and we moved him over to offense. And, um, and, I mean, he's playing defense too, but got his first snaps, and the first two – his first two carries in the game, he fumbled the ball. And you could just cause hadn't done it, you know, butterflies, whatever you want to say there. But then for him to rebound and, and have the performance he had in the game, I mean, he is a really good player, a team guy, a great leader. And so um, I'm excited about the the future for him on both sides of the ball. Now, speaking of defense, uh, going into, uh, you know, like I said, you just started practicing this week and coming off the spring, uh, wh- where are you seeing your defense going right now, you know, in the early stages of fall camp? Yeah, well, we're playing. So we've been a, a three-man front team, an odd front team for the past, 
uh, to three years in New Brockton, and we're going to play. I mean, we, we have multiple, you know, we play three and four man fronts, but we're going to be end up playing more four man front this year probably because we feel like our man fronts, um, are, are we, we have more linemen, and so our fronts can help us. And so, uh, we're going we're gonna to end up playing with more four downs. I think they're growing and, and being physical. And, you know, the, the thing about, defense is everybody's got to play together and the guy who's supposed to make the tackle has got to make the tackle when you fit up the run and, and all those things. And so getting all those pieces in the right places, we move some guys in different spots and making sure that as coaches, we're putting the puzzle to, together correctly and then creating practice opportunities to where what we're practicing is translating into the game. And um, I think we're, I think we're, we're further ahead with that this summer because uh, in the spring we spent a lot of time offensively because of the new offense, new coaches, and all those things. So I'm pleased with the way it's progressing uh, defensively. I think we're, we got some guys in, in uh, the right places, and then we got some guys just right on the on the line that they continue to improve. They're going to be able to help us defensively too, which will be really good. Oh, just, and, you know, how's the team looking from a standpoint of experience? You know, junior seniors, you know, that, that those upperclassmen. Yeah, we got, we got fourteen seniors, which is big. Um, you know, for the the O line is four seniors and one junior, and so that, I mean, they're probably that's probably the oldest position on the team. And the the seniors that we have have played a lot of football. One of one of the O line D lineman Curtis Wombles has started uh, since his freshman year. Um, he had to step in my first year in 2019. He had to step in halfway through the year and uh, started offensive tackle for us and has been ever since. And, um, so they, they played, played some good football and uh, have, have a lot of experience. So they're, they're leading the team. You know, they always, seniors always lead the team. And um, the, I think they're taking it one thing about this group because they, they've lived and they've seen it and seen other groups, you know, how they've led and what's went on is they understand that, hey, this is our team. We have to lead and we have to lead now. And, and what we do matters. The decisions we make matters. And um, I think they're, they're really grasping that early on where sometimes it takes, it takes guys a little while to realize they are the Calvary. There's no Calvary coming. You know, they are, they're the ones everybody's looking to. And so um, I really feel like these guys are are latching on to that, especially as school started Friday. I mean, some of them talk about how, hey, hey, we're the seniors, we're the guys, all that kind of stuff. And so uh, we, we do have a bunch of seniors um, who will have impact, and all of them, uh, I'll say that too, I think this is like every single senior we have will, will start and play and help us in some capacity. You know, just uh, for now, I kind of on a night team for less than two weeks away. It just it feels like I'm sure on your side, it feels like it's really coming up close. I know even just as me as someone that covers high school football here, so it's like it just is getting here faster and faster. But uh, between now and when you guys open up uh, at home against Elba, I know three of your first four games are at home. Uh, what's the most important thing uh, going forward from here? I think we just got to continue to improve, um, continue to get better. You know, the the thing about the football season is a marathon, not a sprint. And then obviously us realizing the way, I mean, our first three games are pretty three, three quality opponents. I mean, three really, really good opponents. And so we've got to make sure that, that we're ready for that, that we're ready for the physicality. You know, we open up with three really physical uh, ball teams and then the, there'll be a, you know, different energy in the stadium when we play Elba because they hadn't played in a really long time in a regular season game. And, um, you know, it'll be, it'll be a big game for both communities. And so we just got to continue to improve and make sure that we're doing the things that we need to do and, and take care of us and to where we can go out and play our style of ball and, and try to control the game and not let our opponents control the game. But it is for sure getting here quick, man. It, it seems like – I don't know what it is about this year. I said that about the summer. It seems like this summer has flew by quicker than any other summer. And then um, it's crazy to me to think we kick off in two weeks. I know. I was telling somebody the other day, I was saying, it feels – I know it's not, but I just said I felt like the, it feels like the season is starting earlier than normal. It does feel like it's starting earlier. I agree. It, is, it, is, it really does. 
Uh, before I let you go, and as I told you before, record, I got a question I'm asking, a new question I'm asking the coaches this year, especially their the first time on this season, uh, versus what I did before. And, and this is this, and just when you get away from football, I mean, like during the you know during the all season, or you know just when you you know you get away from that, what what are some things you enjoy doing? Yeah, I will. So my my wife and and we have a, a dog, and we like to go. We like to travel, so we go different places around when we can. But we especially like going down to the beach anytime we can, and, and spending time out on the water if we can. And so, just you know, the thing about being a football coach is you get to uh, you can travel Christmas break if you want to. You can travel on spring break. Uh, Memorial Day and the 4th of July, you know, and that's really kind of it. So we, we try to take those times and, and take a trip, but traveling and then uh, when I have a chance, do a little saltwater fishing and that kind of stuff. But spending time just, you know, experiencing different places and different things. And then if we if there's nothing else to do, we try to sneak off down to the beach and uh, and just spend some time down there. You know, you're the third one to answer the question, and there, there, there's common themes already. Uh, family, uh, and then you're the second one to mention the beach, and second one to mention fishing. So I have a feeling I'm gonna hear, I'm gonna have a trend on this question this well, season. I'll tell you this: I, I'm not a golfer. I know there's some of them that are golfers out there. Ever, when I used to play golf, it was the most frustrating thing in the world. And I'm like, I got enough of that in my life. I want to go somewhere that's relaxing and don't require uh, a whole lot of. Uh, uh, focus and all that stuff because that's how we live most days and so uh, I, I do enjoy saltwater fishing when I can but but going to the beach and just spending time you know in different places is, is kind of what we try to do absolutely well coach I uh, appreciate you uh, coming on and taking time talking about your team uh, head yes, of the sir. season uh, got a few weeks like, like I said less than two weeks away when the season that's kicks right. off and uh, I appreciate it uh, good luck this season to uh, to you and, uh, and the Brockton Gamecocks and hopefully uh, we can uh, I can check in with you at uh, some point during the season yes sir would absolutely love to just let me know when hey, joining me next on the Wire and Grass High School Football Report is New Slocum Red Tops head coach, Bryant Garrison. And uh, Coach Garrison, I appreciate you taking the time and coming on the show this week. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I'm glad to have you all. And uh, just uh, new to the area, you know, new to, uh, new to the Wiregrass area, just uh, what, what's these last couple of months been for you? It's been a whirlwind, um, but it's been fun and uh, challenging at the same time. Um, getting, the, getting the call that, you know, you've been hired as a coach and then you – you have to transition in, in two weeks to be down here. That was kind of challenging for myself and my family, but uh, it it uh, it always worked out like the way it's supposed to. So uh, we we got everything uh, together and organized and got down here in a in a timely fashion. And so I think my first day was February the twenty eighth, and it kind of started on uh, March the first. But uh, ever since then, man, we've just been hitting the ground running, and the kids have really bought in. And it's just been a uh, it's been a great uh, off season program. It's been a great summer program, and uh, we've got a lot of work done, and we've gotten a lot better. We're just trying to keep working every single day, and uh, just trying to work towards uh, that first game, and uh, hopefully putting a uh, a good product out on the field. Yeah, absolutely, and just you know, got a little, a little bit back just on, on the hiring process. How did that come out? And I'm sure that I mean that's got. I mean, I, it's got to be an exciting feeling for someone first time becoming head coach when you get that first. You know, getting that getting that job, that's got to be in just an, a, a, an emotional, exciting feeling, too. It is. Um, the, the process was very long, not, not the Slocum process, but just trying to get that first one. Uh, the first one is definitely the toughest to get, and many of my mentor coaches, they, they've told me that from the get-go. But um, every single interview process that I went through, I learned something from each one and uh, just kind of built – uh, my my interview skills and my my resume off of it and kept building and kept building and kept learning and kept growing as a as a person and a coach and the the Lord he's gonna put you where he wants to put you and uh, the, the door that, that kept closing it was for a good reason and he opened this one here at Slocum and uh, myself and my family we couldn't be happier so we uh, we're really thankful for the opportunity and uh, we, we love it here. Yeah, so I agree with that 100%. He's going to put you uh, right where you, he needs you to be when you need to be there. Oh, talk about uh, your coach's style. You know, I know in as an assistant, you, you coach both on offense on the defense side of the ball. So I guess I want to start offensively. Just what, what's your philosophy on that side of the ball? 
Well, basically on offense, uh, it doesn't really matter. I don't think to a certain extent what your what your scheme is. You just need to get your best players the football as many times as possible. Um, I, at the end of the day, I don't think it matters so much of what what play that you're calling or or any of that. It's just you know, can you get the best players the football in their hands and putting them in positions to be successful. And, and that's kind of our philosophy, uh, not only mine, but our coaching staff in general. Um, you know, we, we kind of want to morph into an offense that's going to be effective for our players and what we can do well. Um, and whether that's spreading them out, bringing them in, uh, running, passing, uh, we want to be balanced, uh, but at the same time, we want to have explosive plays um, in the in the passing game, but also um, in the running game as well. So uh, we're just looking for those playmakers on offense uh, to find the ones that can, you know, run up in between the tackles, but also get outside and use the speed, but also those that can stretch the defense a little bit. But we want to be aggressive. Uh, we want to keep the defense on, on their heels, keep them guessing. Uh, we want to be balanced, but we want to be balanced by uh, doing what we do and, and attacking the defense based on 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 us and and our our personnel and what and what we do well. Uh, we got to be got to be positive on first down. Got to be positive on first two downs just to make sure that we're not in third and long. We're in third and manageable to to pick up those first downs, keep the clock moving, and uh, just being able to to keep the offense on the field and uh, get, giving the defense a rest because. 4A high school football and in the wiregrass, your your kids are playing both ways. So mm-hmm. you, you're trying to kind of manage that at the same time as well. Uh, just, uh, you know, obviously you just get started with, you know, fall camps, you know, here and just uh, what's, what's the energy been like with the team as, you know, we're, we're, we are getting so closer to the season. Right. Energy has been great, uh, especially all the way up to our last practice this past Friday. Um, we actually went, under the lights for a night practice this past Friday, but the kids really enjoyed that because it's the first time to kind of be on the game field and it's a little bit cooler. You have a lot more energy when it's like that, but we, we try to tr- treat every uh, practice like it's a game and it's a game environment because that's the only way that you're going to get better. And so we try to put our kids in situations that practice that when it comes up in the game, they're going to be used to seeing it and we want to make practices hard for them so that the games are, easy so to speak or they've already been through it they've already seen it um it was it was a tough transition for them when i first got there especially in the weight room uh it it took them a couple of weeks to kind of get acclimated just to me in the way that i do things in the weight program and same can be said for spring practice it was a it was a little bit different for them and the way that i structure practice and the fast-paced tempo that i go about practice not only for the players, but I think the coaches too. It was a transition for them. But now that they're used to it, they understand uh, the standard that we have, that we've set every day. Uh, what, what we're trying to become as a team and our identity that we want to have in place. And so uh, they're, they're really uh, excited. And, and a lot of that is built off the confidence that they have of just being around me and being in our system for a couple months now. So they know what to expect every single day of practice and, um, the, the bar is raised high every day and, you know, the standard is the standard and we got to meet it and exceed it every single day. And, and that's what they've tried to do. And they've done that for the most part and I've been very pleased so far, but the energy has been great. The effort's been great. Um, the buy-in is really great too. So uh, we're really pleased where we're at, but we're definitely not satisfied. We just want to keep getting better every single day. Yeah. And I, I know, uh, their quarterback last year, Colin Thomas, he was a senior. He's, you know, he's gone from the school now. Oh, what, what are things so far? I mean, I know it's early, but how are things looking for you with, at quarterback? There's a competition there going on, and it's daily. Uh, we have uh, a couple of Cades right now that's kind of battling out, uh, Cade Hodges and Cade Burge. Um, they're kind of taking reps on both, um, both quarterbacks, you know, working with first team, working with second team. Um, and it's a competition, and we want to – create that competition at every position as much as possible and let the players know that no spot is given. You got to go out there and earn it every single day. But um, both guys have been doing a really good job. Both guys are very capable of of leading our team at any given point. And I think right now it's just, uh, it's just a matter of who's going to, who's going to win the team, who's going to win it, win the job and, uh, and, 
and earn the team kind of the respect that, you know, they, they've kind of earned that job. So we're kind of waiting for one of those two to kind of take that by the, the bull of the horn, you know, the horn by the bull, or however you want to <laughs> say it, just kind of uh, taking that and taking on that leadership role. But both of them's done a very, very good job right now. And e- either way, we're going to be young at the position. So we're trying to um, not a, not put a lot on any of their shoulders right now to kind of ask them to go out there and not have to throw the ball around 40 times a game. You know, we, we want our offensive line to be – uh, really, really strong and physical, and we we really want to rely on um, a couple of two or three of our seniors that are going to be um, in the backfield for us to kind of tote that burden a little bit, and uh, hopefully, you know, we can get some some good positive yards and positive carries uh, out of all three of them, um, and uh, just kind of take some of the burden off the quarterback shoulders a little bit, but. We are going to have to pass the ball. We're going to have to be efficient in the passing game to make sure that the, we do um, open up the run game as, as well. So we got to be balanced in both. But I'm just really pleased with all all assets um, on our on our offense right now and all aspects of that. So uh, just want to keep building on that every day. Yeah, I know uh, I have a running back. Uh, Rashawn Miller's been one last couple of years. I know since I've been doing his podcast, he's been a name I see in the paper regularly. Uh, when it comes to Slocum, he's a really good player, uh, has been a really good player for Slocum so his senior year. Uh, what have you seen out of him? He, he's given a great deal of leadership so far, not only on offense, side of the ball, defense. Um, he does a little bit of everything. Uh, he's in our return game some too, so um, he's – He's just been a really, really positive um, asset force on on both sides of the ball. And, you know, when one of your best players is also one of your best character guys and one of the hardest working guys on your team, that's, you know, that speaks uh, a lot for him. And it's not just him. It's also uh, Braylon Miller as well. You know, he's he's getting some carries and also uh, Michael Ward. It's those three seniors uh, that we have. And, we're putting a lot of responsibilities on their on their shoulders just because um, they are seniors. They've been around the program a long time. They know what to expect. I mean, everybody kind of looks up to them because when when things are going bad, they need to be the ones that pick things up. And you know, everybody kind of looks to them to see what their attitudes like or what their efforts like. So uh, we really kind of look to them to uh, kind of show maybe the, the underclassmen or the guys that don't have a lot of experience kind of show them the way and kind of pull everybody along. But the, all three of them have done a really, really great, uh, great job as, as far as, um, you know, helping us on offense in the run game. But it's not just the run game. It's what they're doing in the pass block and pass protection. But also we use them um, in, in the pass game as well. So all three phases of the offense, um, every single one of them is doing an outstanding job. And then when we flip them over um, – Braylon and and Michaels are a couple of our linebackers, and uh, Junior also plays kind of a star position, kind of strong safety outside linebacker type. But uh, they're, they're the leaders on the defense too, so uh, we ask a lot out of them, but a lot is expected out of them as as well. And uh, now that they're more comfortable and and uh, kind of the schemes and kind of the things that we want to do, uh, they're getting to be more more vocal, more comfortable in their roles. And uh, I think everybody else is kind of feeding off that. So uh, we're really happy with, with all three of them so far. Oh, uh, what's the, uh, what's the scheme or the style of defense uh, you look to play? Um, it's kind of, kind of a mix. Um, and it depends basically on, I guess, the type of team that you're playing, uh, whether they're kind of spread out or whether they're, um, kind of some of the wing team teams that you see on the high school level, but out of his base, it's a, it's a three, four over and under front. Um, but we also kind of moved to a four, two, five, kind of a nickel look as well. But, uh, we just like on offense. I mean, we want to be really aggressive. We want to be really attacking. We want to be the ones that, that dictate the flow of the game. Uh, we never want to be kind of on our heels, just kind of standing back, wait to see what happens. You know, we, we want to force the issue kind of a little bit. So um, same thing with the defense. We were kind of bland um, at first, especially in the spring, because they were just trying to learn the base of each of it. But now they're, uh, they've really picked up on it, and uh, they're, they're flying around having a lot of fun, which is great to see from a, a defensive 
kind of coach perspective just to see them hitting those gaps and hitting those holes and um you know when when you're confident in what you're doing you you play a lot faster and that's kind of what we're getting to right now getting everybody settled in and uh, whether it's the the front or the linebackers or the secondary everybody now is uh kind of familiar with what's going on they're more experienced they're more confident so there's a lot more communication uh from the front end to the back end and vice versa and everybody kind of knows their roles and where they're supposed to go so um we just kind of want to be very versatile um and and, and attack from from everywhere that we can uh, but also we got to be smart about it just same thing on just like it when I was talking about offense, uh, we got to get our players in in the best positions to to be successful, and, and that's on me as a head coach, also as a defense coordinator. You find out your players' strengths and what they can do well, and then you want to put them there and put them in position uh, to make plays. So that's that's just kind of the philosophy on defense, and uh, kind of carried it over from my days at Alabama a little bit with uh, Coach Saban and Coach Smart. Obviously, it's not as complex as the Alabama or Georgia defense per se, but it uh, I've carried a lot of the terminology that I've learned from them. It's kind of carried over with me. So we kind of use kind of the same uh, base principles that um, I've learned from there. And uh, the kids have picked on it, picked up on really well. And so uh, we're, we're really progressing and uh, it'll be, it'll be fun to see them uh, get out there for the first time and, and get after it. Yeah, absolutely. And the, the season's fast approaching. I mean, I keep looking at it. So it feels like it's happening sooner, but it's not than it is. Uh, something, uh, and this, this is the last question before I let you go. It's something I'm asking the coaches this year. Every year I'll try to have a, a fun question at the end of these conversations and ask the coach. Uh, but uh, okay. w- w- when you get a chance, you know, when you get, you know, when you're away from football, they're in the off season, you know, during the downtime, uh, what are some other stuff you like, uh, like doing? My family and I love just to go to the beach. And just to just to go down and just go down there and relax, and uh, it was kind of a a great move for my wife because she <laughs> was born actually on the on the east coast, so she was at the beach beach all the time. So being an hour, an hour and a half away from the beach, she she loves it, and she loves to go down and just hang out every chance that she gets. So my son, he's three, about to be four. He he loves going to the beach too. So as a family, that's some of the things that we love to do. Um, myself. If it's just me and some of the other coaches or, or whatever, I, I love to go play a little bit of golf. Um, I'm definitely not very good at it, but I love to at least go out there, swing the sticks a little bit. And uh, love, I mean, love to continue to watch sports, especially college football, um, still keeping up with uh, with Alabama um, and some of the stuff that they do. And, um, but it, and it's fun to, for me personally, to kind of um, see some of the guys that I've I may have coached um, earlier in my career and see them um, on the college field or even on the pro field, just kind of seeing them. And uh, it just gives me as a coach and, you know, my, my self gratification just to see them doing well as, as an individual. So um, those are just kind of a few things I love to do. If, uh, if there's time to go to a lake or something, I mean, we love to be around, around water, but um, spend a lot of quality time with the family just because, you don't get a lot of it during football season, so any of the any time that you do have um, is it's time that I love, love to spend with my wife and with my son and just kind of hanging out with them and, um, and enjoying that that quality time that we have. Um, now, when it gets after football season, uh, kind of being the athletic director, I have to be at some basketball games, baseball and softball and all that. So the, the time is kind of spread thin too. So <laughs> anytime you can get a chance just to have that quality family time, we, we definitely love to take it. Yeah. The, the beach has been a popular, uh, you're the fourth coach I've interviewed this season before the season so far. And the uh, beach has been a very popular one. Family beach has been a very popular one on there. But uh, anyways, coach, uh, I do appreciate you taking the time. I kept you a couple minutes longer than I, I know I said I would. You guys kick off on the uh, 26th uh, at GW alone. So best of luck this season to you and then uh, the Slocum red tops. And I hope maybe we can uh, ch- check in during the season, see how the red tops are doing. Yes, sir. Sounds sounds good. Thank you so much for having me again. And once again, thanks to both Coach Garrison and Coach Holmes for coming on this week's edition of the Wiregrass High School Football Report. And good luck once again to both New Brockton and Slocum for this upcoming season. Hopefully we can uh, catch back up with both coaches and uh, see how both teams are doing. 
Now, real quick, before we get out of here, a little around the wire grass, brief edition, abbreviated edition, really. The rankings are out. The first rankings came out this weekend, and we got a few teams in the wire grass that are ranked or that did receive votes. So we're going to go over them real quickly for we close up the show for this week. In 7A, Enterprise comes in at number eight, and they're coming in under year one under Ben Blackman. They were eight and four last year under Coach Darlington. He had a really good three year run there. Let's see if Coach Blackman can keep that going. In 5A, none of the teams in the Wiregrass were ranked, but Ufala did receive votes at 26. In 4A, Andalusia comes in at number three. They had two first place votes, they were nine and five last season. In 3A, Op comes in at number four. And then receiving votes was Strawn with 20 and Houston Academy with 12. In 2A, you have number four, Ayrton there, uh, 10 and 2 last year. Big year for Ayrton. They're looking to continue that. And GW Long comes in at number eight at 8 and 2 last season. And Whisper did receive votes. And then in 1A, you have Brantley, seven first place votes for them. Brantley's always on the top of this thing, aren't they? It just feels that way, anyways. Uh, they were 12 and 1 last year. Elba comes in at number six at 10 and 2. And Kinston received votes in the 1A uh, rankings. Anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this edition of the Wiregrass High School Football Report. Be back next week. Hopefully, two more coaches will be on the show as we continue the countdown to this season. And next week, we'll be talking about games. We'll be coming up because the following Friday, we'll have football games uh, to talk about. So uh, it, it's going to be a fun podcast next week. Remember, you can follow me on social media at P. Jordan SCC. Podcast is available on Apple Podcasts. So please follow, rate, and review over there. Leave a review. I will read it on a future edition of the show. If you're on Apple Podcasts, there is a direct link where you can find the show as well. And then also you can watch the show over on YouTube at the Philip Jordan Sports YouTube channel. Just uh, go find it. Hit subscribe button. Also hit the bell for all the notifications. And also if you leave a comment on YouTube, I will read that as well. You can always email me at sports.philipjordan at gmail.com. Talk to you guys next week. Bye-bye.